It's all very well using that GPS navigation system to help us fly around the world, but how do we know that the source of that information is correct? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to the 13th class in the radio navigation series. Today we're going to be having a look at satellite augmentation. Basically, we have to check that the signals from the satellites that we receive are reliable and good enough to use while we're flying around. And we can potentially improve them through the use of a few clever systems. When GPS and other satellite navigation systems were designed, they were only accurate to around 13 meters or so. To try and improve the accuracy of a system, a comparison between two GPS signals and fixes against each other can be used to create an accuracy down to less than one meter, which is called differential GPS. This is why the military have those two frequencies to use in GPS. Nowadays though, the raw signals from satellites are highly accurate, so differential GPS isn't really used in civilian operations, but to keep the accuracy levels high and to check we're getting reliable information for navigation, there were three augmentation systems developed. The first is called ABAS, which is air-based augmentation system, where the receiver in the aircraft can monitor the integrity and reliability of the signals received from the position fix and decide if it's worth using that information from the GPS signal or if it's worth discounting that information for something else. Ground-based augmentation systems, or GBAS, are where a ground station checks the integrity of the fixes and sends the information to the aircraft so the aircraft knows if signals are reliable or not, or if there's any small corrections that need to be applied. And satellite-based augmentation, or SBAS, is where a large network of ground-based station monitors the reliability of the signals and sends augmentation data to satellites, which then send it back down to the aircraft for uh, details on any corrections or reliability. These three systems are used to check that navigation information is correct and allows us to use satellite navigation to a very high level of accuracy and reliability. The first air-based augmentation system we are going to look at is called Receiver Autonomous Integrity Monitoring or RAIM for short. This requires an extra satellite to be used. So instead of four, like the normal situation for a 3D fix, we need five. This fifth satellite will substitute in its data, time, and ID at repeating regular intervals, and the RAIM system will check to see if the position calculated has changed. If it has, then one of the signals from the other four satellites might be unreliable, and after multiple cycles of this protest, process, the faulty satellite signal could be identified and should be identified and can be removed from the position calculation. If this fifth satellite is substituted in and let's say this green satellite was deemed to be unreliable, then we were now gonna be back down to four satellites and we'll have lost the RAIM protection. This is called RAIM protection with fault detection. So that needs five satellites. It's only fault detection because any exclusion or replacement of a satellite means we would lose the RAIM functionality. So if we want to continue to have RAIM functionality, then we need to add another level. So six satellites would be needed if we want the ability to have continuous RAIM with fault detection and exclusion. So for normal fault detection, we need one more additional satellite, so five. And for fault detection and exclusion, we would need two more so we can replace one and still have the ability to perform all the fault detection stuff. And I suppose you could add more and more levels to provide multiple layers of detections and detector replacing uh, with that one and this one and that one. But thankfully for us, this is not how the RAIM system works. It kind of maxes out at six satellites. The second form of ABAS is called Aircraft Autonomous Integrity Monitoring. In this method, the GPS position is compared to a position calculated using conventional navigation equipment such as VORs and NDBs and that sort of thing. And on modern aircraft, the flight management computer is constantly tuning nav aids and getting position fixes off of these conventional nav aids so that the position can be verified and useful things can be displayed on a navigation display relative to the aircraft position. This can be things such as our route, that we have planned, any airports nearby, any uh, nav aids, 
and things like that. And a navigation display is essentially like a moving map, which can be updated using GPS position information and a database of relevant points. GPS is normally the primary way of updating our position, but it can be verified by that conventional nav aid system. That's what a flight management computer with AIM is doing. If the data is unreliable from the GPS source, then that information can be disregarded and position fixing can be done using conventional ground-based nav aids. Imagine, for instance, we had a VOR DME over here on the map, it would show this VOR is northeast of our position at about 25 miles. The navigation would initially so show this position using the GPS position and comparing it to a database, which would have all the coordinates of these VORs and other points of interest in it and our current position as well. And that's what it would draw on the navigation display. With AIM, the VOR would be automatically tuned by the flight management computer to see whether it makes sense for the VOR and air, our aircraft to be in that position. If the flight management computer tuned up this VOR and it said we were actually on radial 180 at 30 miles away, somewhere down here, then the AIM system can discount the GPS position and it might think that it has an error in it and it would be removed as a source for updating this position. This can be useful during times of GPS spoofing or jamming, for example. So this is what the flight management computer positions look like. You can see we have the top position, uh, which shows that the flight management computer thinks it is at these coordinates. Then we have an IRS position, which is a clever piece of internal navigation equipment that we'll learn about more when we look at the instrument section. Then we have the GPS positions and the radio position. If the GPS was jammed, for example, then these lines would be blank and we would see that the radio position would probably be the same as the FMC position, the flight management computer position. In this current state though, we can see that the FMC position is the same as the right GPS position as that is deemed to be reliable enough when comparing it to all other position fixes and that's the one that we would use for our position and for drawing displays on the navigation display. Ground-based augmentation systems, or GBAS, are done using a fixed station with known coordinates. It will periodically obtain GPS position fixes and compare them to its known latitude and longitude coordinates. This way it can determine if the GPS system has any errors in it. And usually this is done, this is through the uh, uh, errors in the satellite clocks, ionospheric conditions and atmospheric conditions that we saw and learn about in the previous class. This error information can be applied to the raw GPS data to improve accuracy. And the error corrections are sent via a VHF signal to the aircraft so that the aircraft can apply the corrections within a certain area, usually about a 20 nautical mile ring around the station. GBAS can be used for a positioning service which improves accuracy and allows for integrity monitoring. Basically, if a GPS signal is way off from the latitude and longitude of the fixed ground station, it can be ignored. And the other service that GBAS can provide is to use an enhan that enhanced GPS information to create a GBAS approach. This is an approach that is able to provide 3D guidance down to 200 feet above the runway threshold in the same way as an ILS would. It was referred to in charts and things like that as a GLS, a GBAS landing system. Um, I've never seen one in real life, but they must be out there somewhere and they must exist somewhere. A satellite-based augmentation system or SBAS uses a network of fixed ground station. It basically takes the idea of GBAS and spreads it out over a large area. This network of ground stations takes periodic position fixes from satellites just like in GBAS. The information of what satellites are giving, what readings, etc. is sent via a data link to a master station. And this master station can compare and look at all the data and determine if any satellites are giving bad readings. If they are, then a correction can be calculated. The advantage of this system over GBAS is that a large area is covered and because of the large sample size, there's lots of ground stations, the errors of individual satellites can be figured out and specific corrections to those satellites can be sent out. 
In GBAS, the correction is for the area you're flying in at the time, not for the individual satellites themselves. So outside of the range that GBAS covers, the correction is kind of pointless. And once these individual satellite corrections are calculated based on atmospheric conditions, ionospheric conditions, atomic clock errors, etc., then these corrections can be sent up to separate geostationary satellites which cover a specific area. These satellites, which are separate from the GPS satellites, can then send correction messages that receivers can pick up and apply to the raw GPS data. There are a few regions of SBAS coverage. Uh, we get the Wide Area Augmentation System for the US and North America, the Multi-Function Satellite Augmentation System for Japan, a GPS-aided Geo-Augmentation Navigation System in India, and the European Geostationary Navigation Overlay System. If you want to look up more details on that, go ahead and you'll see the areas that they cover and basically they're only very reliable within those areas and outside of those areas they will not be uh, quite as good. So to summarize then, a nice quick class on satellite augmentation. We've got air-based, uh, ground-based and satellite-based. Air-based or ABAS systems fall into two categories. You get RAIM, which is when a fifth satellite monitors and substitutes itself in every so often to make sure that the satellites are giving good information. If the position deviates wildly, then through multiple iterations, the incorrect satellite can be eliminated. And if you just want to eliminate it, you need five satellites. But if you want to eliminate the, sat the dodgy satellite and maintain RAIM coverage, you need six satellites. For maintaining um, RAIM coverage, we call it fault detection and exclusion, whereas just uh, replacing the system and losing the RAIM functionality, we just call it fault detection. In the aircraft, we can have AIM, which basically is where the Flight management computer compares the GPS position to conventional nav aid fixes and the IRS position of the aircraft. And if any of these signals are dodgy, such as if it's being spoofed or jammed, then the GPS signal can be discounted and the position that the aircraft thinks it's in will be calculated using uh, conventional nav aids or the IRS position. A ground-based augmentation system uses a fixed ground station with known latitude and longitude coordinates. It will then take a fix from the GPS and the GPS system and say, yep, that's spot on, or no, there is a bit of an error here. This is the error that we need to apply to aircraft in this area, and it will send out that correction signal over a VHF frequency to an aircraft within about a 20 nautical mile range. The SBAS system, a satellite-based augmentation system, takes the concept of GBAS and spreads out over a large network. So you've got multiple ground stations taking multiple fixes, comparing the results and then calculating corrections based off of those results or completely discounting satellites based on those results. The correction is then fired up to a geostationary satellite, which is outside of the normal GPS or GLONASS, um, Galileo systems. And then this separate geostationary satellite will send corrections down to the aircraft to apply to those GPS signals. SBAS has the advantage over GBAS because it can pinpoint different satellites and different corrections for each of those satellites, whereas GBAS just sort of applies a correction to that area that you're in.